hard hit rate, especially for a rookie. And that's built into left field. And just like that, the game is tied. What a way to start a season. Beautiful. For you longtime listeners out there, you know exactly what time of day it is. You know exactly why Jake Melham is back in your podcast feed. This is the Royals recap presented by Royals Review. Once again, I'm Jake Milham. Thank you very much for joining me today. Directly following the Kansas City Royals opening day loss against the Minnesota Twins, 4-1. to one. Coming up later on in the show, we will hear from manager Mac Quattrero, plus superstar shortstop Bobby Witt Jr. Just moments after the disheartening four to one loss against the defending AL Central champions. Listen, I don't think there's uh I don't think there's any other way to to put the loss. There are there are some good positives to take away from this, I, I will say that. But there a lot of the questions we thought answered, well, that uh that just did not happen. Or at least we didn't see those answers on opening day. It was a lot of folks drew criticism directly to guys like Hunter Renfro and Salvador Perez, guys who were on wobbly foundations heading into the 2024 season. And unfortunately, those were a couple of the guys who came up just short in front of a sellout crowd in Coffin Stadium. Nearly 39,000 fans packed into Truman Sports Complex to watch the Kansas City Royals watch Super Bowl winning head coach Andy Reid toss out the first pitch just feel those opening day vibes once again after a long but very very active offseason for the Kansas City Royals let's go ahead and hop right into it and I'm I'm going to start off with some positives I think let's let's just go ahead and get it out of the way We all know who the best performers were against the Minnesota Twins to kick off the 2024 season. Michael Garcia came right out of the gate and proved, hey, if I'm going to be the leadoff guy, I'm going to take this by the reins. His leadoff home run in the first inning was the only run that the Royals scored in uh, Thursday's loss. So that was, uh, it was good. It set the tone pretty well. Um, it was, it was a close game for much of it. And that was really only thanks to Michael Garcia's home run. Um, hit, that hit was only one of five that the Royals logged against the Minnesota Twins. Pablo Lopez, hey, kudos to him. He was the Minnesota Twins opening day starter for a reason. He looked absolutely just dominant against the Kansas City Royals. Long, long time Kansas City fans are, are used to that for Pablo Lopez. Um, he he looked that in 2023 and uh, not much is going to change it seems in 2024. So that is uh, that's disheartening to say the least. Moving on down the lineup, Bobby Witt Jr. Listen, he got off to a uh, to a pretty shaky start to the season. Not gonna lie, the uh, the two strikeouts were concerning earlier on in the in the game, but a walk and kind of a, a fluky bloop double hit to uh, left field. Hey, he's uh, he's still entering game two of the 2024 season with an OPS above a thousand. So that's uh can't can't ask for much more than that. Moving on down the lineup, um, I'm I'm going to skip over Vinny Pasquantino. Unfortunately, he uh, he put a lot of balls in play. He really did, but he didn't draw any walks. He didn't record any strikeouts, and unfortunately, he didn't record any hits either. So hopefully that's just more of that rust. You know, Pasquatch is back in the lineup. I, I talked about this with Jeremy Greco and with Max Reaper on our last full episode ahead of opening day. And I said that I'm going to be watching Pasquantino pretty closely in 2024. Listen, he is uh, he's a guy that maybe we crowned a little too soon as a Royals fan base. And unfortunately, his opening day performance against the Twins didn't do anything to dispel those concerns. The guy I'm concerned about the most, though, overreacting a little bit after op- opening day is Sal. Sal Salvador Perez, man. He uh it it looked rough. It was it was a pretty rough going out there for the veteran making his 10th opening day start behind the dish, uh Kansas City franchise record actually. And it's it's crazy to think that he's been around in this organization this long. Um, but unfortunately, he's, he's starting to show that age a little bit. He was not great at the plate. 
two strikeouts, no hits, didn't do anything to to advance the runners around the bases. Really, he was a, a net negative in the opening day loss. So hopefully he bounces back soon. I know all it takes is one or two deep home runs from Salvador Perez for fans to be back on his uh, on his hype train and believe that he is the real deal once again. Unfortunately, it's uh, I don't know. He's he's got to prove it to me personally. MJ Melendez he did have a he did have another hit today. Um, a couple of hard hit balls. It I don't know. It uh, he looked good out there in left field. Um, he kept the ball in front of him, which I know I know it sounds like a basic thing and it kind of is at the MLB level, but. That was something that he wasn't able to do at times in left field. Um, he didn't have any errors. He didn't have any issues fielding, as far as I could tell. Always uh, always ready to go back and rewatch, though. Hunter Renfro did not do anything to earn the trust of Kansas City Royals fans out there. Um, Adam Frazier, he had he had some good back control. He, he put balls in play. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. He legged out an infield single, so that was pretty cool. But, I mean... He's uh he's in the seven hole for a reason. Nelson Velasquez, unfortunately, he kind of had a uh, he had a bigger net uh, negative impact on the Kansas City Royals. Unfortunately, he uh, his his ground out in the bottom of the fifth really just kind of quelled any threat that the Royals were presenting at that point. And at that time, they were still only trailing by one run and it was kind of a 50 50 toss-up but him grounding into the double play when there were no outs and adam frazier on first both those guys getting out with two outs and kyle isbell coming up coming up to the plate it uh yeah that was not too good speaking of kyle isbell he, he started off the season with the hit so kudos to him i am i'm expecting some improvements from him at the plate is is how I'm going to put that. I don't think he's going to have a breakout season at the plate, but I, I think he could be better than most people will give him credit for. Um, all in all, 31 at-bats, five hits, and a walk. That's it. So it's uh, It was pretty disheartening. And I know we are, we're going to get on this really, really quick. This is what I was seeing all over social media. This is what I was hearing on the airwaves, and it's because it's the truth. The Royals once again struggled to capitalize on runners in scoring position, going for 0 for 6 in those situations. And in such a such a tight game. I mean, four four to one, even at that point, that was a, a gap that you can never really count out any MLB team. For most of this game, though, it was two to one. And it, it was it was very disappointing to see. Okay, MJ Melendez is on second with no nobody out. What are we gonna do? And he didn't even he didn't even get past second. So that was that was disappointing. I'm I'm hoping that we're not gonna see a, a repeat of 2023. Y- y'all remember that, or did y'all forget about that? Just terrible offensive stretch that the Royals put together to start off last season. At least he scored a run, I guess, right? That's uh, that, that's what we're going to say. Yeah. 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 Nope. Um, the real, the real superstar of opening day and rightfully so was unfortunately the guy who caught the loss in the decision. Cole Reagan's absolutely looked the part of an opening day starter having a quality start against the defending al central champions pitching six innings with only two earned runs three walks but nine strikeouts nine strikeouts that is absolutely crazy and one of those runs that he gave up was a home run to royce lewis so you know we're just getting uh gotta get those things out of the way all in all he looked great he said an opening day Record for uh, for strikeouts. So kudos to him. I I say that as a uh, as a Kansas City Royals record. Excuse me. So expecting big things from him. Uh, we will. We should see him take the bump again. On uh, let's see here. Math is hard. It's going to be against the Orioles. That's all that matters. Well, we'll see him. We'll see him here soon enough. Um, in relief, there was uh, there was some shaky stuff. Nick Anderson came in. He induced some soft contact, which which I liked. He did give up a hit, but 
all in all, he wasn't overpowering. He came in, he didn't allow a run, and he, and he kept the Royals in the game. That's that's all you can ask for from this bullpen, and that's something that uh, that we didn't see in 2023 at all times. But <laughs> this is... Oh, he, he made me nervous, I'll tell you what. On Hell Serpa, he, he came in... And he allowed two runs, or excuse me, not two runs, two hits right off the bat. And, you know, runners on second and first and no outs. It, uh, it looked like it was going to be the inning that just sent the Royals packing or for any hopes of an opening day win. But he came through in the end. He got a he got a pop out and then he struck out the next two batters. So, hey. All in all, the the box score looks pretty good, but man, I was really, really nervous to see what the lefty was going to do out of the bullpen. Is uh, I, I think he was a little nervous. I, I really do. It's uh, watching watching Salvador Perez trying to direct the the tunneling and how each batter was going to be attacked, and it just didn't seem like Serpa was following that. So that's that's something to keep an eye on. I personally, with how quick he settled down, I'm hoping it was just nerves. I, I really do. Unfortunately, the guy who came in and he just it, uh, he just shit the bed. I think that's the that's the best way to put that. Chris Stratton, another one of the offseason acquisitions. He only had one inning of action, but man, he his two earned runs that he gave up really just closed the door on any Royals comeback. He had two walks in there with a strikeout. So not the best Kansas city debut for the veteran. Hopefully there are better things for him on the horizon. All in all, your boys in blue are O and one in game one of the 2024 season. There are 161 more games to go. So don't uh, don't give up hope yet. There were plenty of fans, very, very boisterous fans, very electric fans, as Bobby Wood Jr. puts it out there in Kauffman Stadium. So keep on supporting them. I don't see a reason to uh, to pack it in yet. Ask me. Ask me this time in uh, in May, though, and I, I might have a different tune. I, I do want to say this. Um, I appreciated that both sides of the April 2nd vote were present in Kauffman Stadium. I, I will say that the uh, the Royals, in a more official manner, you know, played their vote yes on April second ads within the stadium. Reportedly, um, I saw it on some of the on some of the television feeds as well. Uh, but on the on the other end of the spectrum, apparently, some some fans in Kauffman Stadium unfurled a vote no banner about in the midpoint of the game. So it's uh, I thought that was cool. That's not something that you see every day in Kauffman Stadium. Um, but if if you want to know more about that situation and where we stand, Jeremy Greco's got the lowdown on on the Sunday episode. Um, you can also check out his stuff on RoyalsReview.com under the name Hakaius, H-O-K-I-U-S. He has uh, he has the scoop. Truthfully, he understands it so much better than than I could. And frankly, I'm not read into it as much because I'm not a I'm not a county resident. My vote does not matter in this matter. So let's get back to baseball. Let's go ahead and hear from manager Mac Quatrero and Bobby Witt Jr. on the other side of this ad break. Stay tuned. Two outs on three pitches in the first. Guy put a good swing on the on the 0-2 fastball for the home run, and you know Correa is obviously a tough out for a lot of a lot of pitchers, and so he battled him, got the the two out RBI, and he he was really good. Other you know gave up a couple of runs. We'll take that every time out. You feel like there are some missed chances offensively for you guys. Especially the Not many. I mean, you got to tip your cap to Lopez and Stewart and Jax there. I mean, we didn't we didn't have too many opportunities. Um, the leadoff double from MJ um, and Renfro put a good swing on that ball. It's a nice play that Correa makes. But yeah, we didn't we didn't mount too much. Lopez is tough. What do you think of the adjustment that Michael had on the home run in the first inning? The first inning? I'm a big fan. Yeah, lead off homers. I like those. That was good. Anyway, but like the swing adjustment, though, like being able to um, hit out of the ballpark and piece of that nature. Yeah, I mean. I don't know what swing adjustment you're talking about. I mean, he got a he got a hanging breaking ball and and hit a home run. The runs that they got late, I mean, put you down a little bit further. 
what's your confidence level in you guys to be able to come back? I mean, one run game is one thing, but when it's ready, are you, is your, are you guys ready to come back from three down? Which well, I mean, three is a lot tougher than one, obviously, but Chris Stratton's going to get big outs for us throughout the year. There's no question. Today, a couple check swing rollers, you know, one moves the runners up, one – you know, scores a guy. I mean, you, you can't defense that. So, but, you know, gave up a couple of runs there. Obviously, we feel better being down one in the heart of the order, but regardless, we, we got we got to come back there if we get a chance. On the pass ball wild pitch, uh, what did you see from the dugout? It obviously, Salby kind of thought it did. He thought it did, yeah. So, obviously, we just go to Duper on replay, and he said it didn't. If you could take us through the decision of bringing Zerpa there um, in the eighth down one, or yeah, in the eighth inning. Yeah, Zerp, we have a lot of confidence in Zerp. I mean, he's going to pitch in a lot of different roles. We know he's versatile. We know he bounces back well. Um, you know, obviously, you think, you hope you get a one, two, three inning. You know, Correa is going to be a tough matchup for him right out of the gate. But then, as the lefties were mounting and, and Castro is a switch hitter, that um, we feel good with Zerpa against him. So I have all the confidence in the world. He's going to throw strikes, he's going to make them beat him. Matt, recognizing it's 101 162. What is it that you do take away from, from even if it's very little? From the re the result? Just, just I mean, the crowd was electric. The, the fans were into it. Um, it was a good ball game. You know, we just, you, you're not going to win a ton of games scoring one run. So, we, you know, you're going to play against good pitching like that. You're going to have to figure out a way to scratch a couple across. Is uh, what would you like from Reagan? Oh, it's it's incredible every time he goes out. It's just, like people say, oh, he's down. Look up, ten strikeouts. So it's just he's the ace. Like I said, like we were talking about, but it was it was a lot of fun to watch. Bobby, you guys didn't have a lot of opportunities, but the, the one where you got a couple guys on early, or at least one that you know MJ was on early. How important is it for you guys to take advantage of those, especially early in the season, to kind of get a little confidence? Yeah, definitely. Anytime you score runs, that gives you confidence. So that's definitely what we're going after. And so just kind of. We learn from today, move on, uh, have an off day tomorrow, and we're back at it Sunday, Saturday. How was this opening day compared to others for you? Uh, the weather was a lot better, um, but, yeah, it was just the fans, electric. It was amazing seeing all those fans out there. Um, yeah, we didn't pull off the win for them, but I know that it just kind of gives you gives you a sense of urgency. To just we want to get back winning because of just what the – even just that eruption of the crowd noise and everything. It's a lot of fun just to see that and just be part of that. So definitely get back to work. Alrighty, folks. So this is coming out on Friday. So unfortunately, the Kansas City Royals do not have a game today. That is, that's right. They give us opening day, but then they take away baseball right away. Um, the boys in blue are coming back on Saturday, March 30th, once again against the Twins at 310 Central Standard Time is first pitch. Right-handed pitcher Seth Lugo is going to be making his Kansas City Royals debut facing Right-handed pitcher Joe Ryan, another very, very good pitcher in that Twins rotation. It'll be interesting to see that battle and see how Lugo does in Kauffman Stadium. He had a little bit of a of a rough spring, so I'm, I'm intrigued to see if he can bounce back. All in all, the Royals are just trying to get to 500 early on in the season. I really think they could do it. Stay tuned to RoyalsReview.com for our breakdown on the opening day shenanigans and what Royals fans can expect moving forward in the season. Once again, I'm Jake Milham. Thank you all for your support. If you don't mind giving me a follow on X at Jacob Milham KC. Plus, you can follow the podcast at Royal Rundown Pod on X and on TikTok. Thank you all for your time. And until next time, go Royals!